here we're talking about categorical probabilities laid out in a one-way table, and we're looking at an example to help illustrate um, the idea behind this hypothesis testing procedure. Okay, so let's start first of all with the data, and we'll talk about where it came from. So the data basically is from a survey. The survey was essentially a multinomial experiment. You can read in your textbooks about that or read in your class notes about that. Um, multinomial experiments have five conditions that must be met, and this experiment met those conditions. And basically what it involved is essentially asking 300 people which of these three cities they would like to have a free ticket to if they could get a free trip to one of those three cities. So say that somebody said, hey look, you've just won a prize, you can get um, a free trip to any of these three cities, you just have to pick which one you want to go to, and the people then select which city they would choose, chosen in that scenario. So um, the data turned out to be that 99 people of the 300 said they wanted to go to Rome, 129 chose Paris, and 72 people in the study chose London as their city of choice. So with this data, what we want to do is to run some kind of a hypothesis test. So um, I'm going to give you one particular example of a hypothesis test that can be conducted. This one is testing HO versus HA, where HO essentially is the hypothesis that each of the three cities has an equal number of people wanting to travel to it, or an equal proportion of the public would desire to go to each of these three cities. That means there's no preference among the three cities. Now, how can you see that? Well, first of all, the hypothesis notice is about a probability, a proportion, or a rate, right? So it's saying the proportion for the first city is equal to the proportion of people who would want to travel to the second city, now I have dot 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 in case, of course, in the scenario where you had more than three cities, you know, you would you know, have a bunch more of these things. But either way, in our case, the last city here would be London, so it would be the third category, right? And I have a K here at the end, that's important notation. In this kind of problem, we usually let the number of categories be equal to K, the variable K. So we'll call this K equals three, so three categories is our K. So in this case, it would be three here, the third proportion, right? So the null hypothesis is that the first city um, has the same percentage of people who want to travel to it as the second city, is that the same number of people who want to travel to it as the third city, or the instead of number, you can think of the percentage or the rate of people who want to travel to that city is equal to the second city is equal to the third city. And finally, you could just say the proportion of people who want to be want to go to Rome is equal to the proportion of people who want to go to Paris is equal to the proportion of people who want to go to London. So that's the null hypothesis. Does it have to be that they're all equal? No. Right after this, we'll look at another example where you can change this and specify specific percentages, because you don't always have to say they're all the same, but that's one possibility, right? And then that'll be um, competing against this, which is that at least one of the multinomial probabilities does not equal its hypothesized value. Now, I've put this here like this because this is the most generic form of the alternative hypothesis. So when we say at least one of the multinomial probabilities does not equal its hypothesized value, the first question I would ask is what hypothesized value are we saying each of these would have? Well, think about it for a second. If they're all equal, right, and they have to, since that covers all the possible cases, there's just these three cities that the people could choose among, that means each one has to be a third of the total, right? So basically you can say that this is basically saying the same thing as row one is equal to one third, row two is equal to one third, and row three is equal to one third. Together all of that adds up to one, which is 100% of all the possible outcomes. So this alternative hypothesis is saying, hey, at least one of these multinomial probabilities does not equal this hypothesized value. So to say they're all equal is to say they're all one third. Why one third? Because there are three categories. If we're saying they're all equal, each one of them has a third of the total probability. Okay, good. So that's that. Now, assuming that that's the case, then the next question is how do we go about actually testing that hypothesis? Well, we have a test stat to do that, right? We always have to have data, which is we have what we have here, and then from the data we form a test stat. Now that test stat formula down here, it says that it has a chi-squared distribution, that's the notation here, chi-squared, so it's got a chi-squared distribution, and it has this following formula, which a lot of people are intimidated by. It's actually a pretty easy formula to work out, so I want to take a moment here to just work it out for our example to see how simple it actually is. So if we wanted to work it out here, we'd have, okay, chi-squared is equal to, so what is this? This is a summation, right? So it looks like we're going to add a bunch of things together. What are we going to add together? Well, there's this complicated fraction here. It looks like we're going to add 
something squared divided by something else, right? Two, another one of those, right? Two, another one of those. Now I'm actually going to stop here because it turns out we'll have as many of these fractions as we have categories. So we'll have as many of these fractions as categories. Since we have three categories, we'll have three fractions to work out. And let's look at the notation now. The notation here in these fractions is O i minus e sub i divided by, well, sorry, squared divided by e sub i. So O sub i is just the observed value. And what that means is what value do you see in the original set of data? So we get to fill in all those O's now. We can say the O for Rome is 99. The O for Paris is 129. The O for London is 72. All right, so that's what we see first. We see 99 people want to go to Rome, we see 129, we see 72 people wanting to go to London, right? That's the observed values, what we actually saw in the data. Then we have this other symbol, E, E sub I, that's the expected value. What did you expect to happen? Well, let's think about this for a second. We said a minute ago that they were all going to be equal, that essentially a third of the people would want to go to each of these cities, respectively, right? So we expected a third of the total people surveyed would say Rome, a third of them would say Paris, a third of them would say London. In other words, that we expected all these to be equal. Well, I did say at the beginning there were 300 people in the study, right? So you can figure out that what you expect to happen is essentially what? Well, as a formula, it's this. It's the number of people involved in the study, that'd be 300, and then the percentage you believed each of these to have. So, in other words, for the first expected value, E sub 1, the very first expected value, you expected a third of the people to say they wanted to go to Rome, right? So it would be the n times the probability specified here. So we could say it's like n times pi, right? n times pi. n being the big total, the grand total number of people involved in the study, times the probability for the ith, or in this case, for the first category, right? So we said they're all one-third, so we can just put a third in for each of these. But of course, we can see that then, of course, that's going to be a third of 300 is 100. So we say that for each of these, the expected value is 100. We expected 100 people to say they wanted to go to each of these cities. And then, of course, it's the same symbol on the bottom, another 100 at the bottom for each of these. All right, the rest is really just calculator work at this point, right? You know, 99 minus 100 gives you 1. 1 squared is, or it gives you negative 1, but 1 squared or negative 1 squared is just 1. 1 over 100 is the first number, right? This one will give you 29 squared over 100, and then 28 squared over 100, negative 28 squared over 100, so on and so forth, and that will give you the answer for your chi-squared test statistic. So you just work out each of these fractions and add the three results together, and that's it. All right, great. Now. From there, once you have that answer, you would compare it against a critical value, and because this test stat is a chi-squared distribution, you'll be comparing it against the chi-squared value. And what you're going to do to look it up is you're going to look up some alpha that will be given in the problem, so we'll have some significance level to start, and then you have k minus 1 degrees of freedom. So the table for chi-squared has a degrees of freedom column that you have to look down, you know, and see where your degrees of freedom is before you go over and find your table value. Well, that degrees of freedom is just k minus 1. Remember, k is the number of categories. So in this case, we had three categories, Rome, Paris, or London. Take one away from it, that gives you two in this case. So whatever your alpha is, you look it up under two degrees of freedom, and you find your critical value. Then you compare your test stat to that, and it's very simple. If your test stat is larger than the critical value, you will reject HO, and you will support HA. And that's it. Now I can imagine, because these numbers are going to be fairly large, that we probably will end up rejecting the null hypothesis here. But again, this is just an example to give you the basic feel for the problem. So let's erase this and look at another scenario for HO. And that scenario would involve a scenario where we don't have all the probabilities being equal to one another. So what if the problem hadn't said they were all equal, but rather said something like, what if I said something like this? I might say, well, I think the probability or the percent of people who are going to say they prefer to go to Rome, I might say, hey, I think that percent is going to be a third, right? Or let's even use numbers. Let's use, let's say, 0.33, just for argument's sake, 33%. And then I might say that the proportion of people who want to go to Paris is going to be, I don't know, let's say 45%. So 0.45. 
And then the proportion of people who say they would like to go to London. Well, let's think about this for a second. How many people total have we, how many percentages out of 100 have we come up with here, right? So we have 40 and 30 is 70, and then 78, right? So a total of 78. So how much does that leave left, right? It leaves 28 left, right? Or 22, sorry. 22% left for London. So now, of course, if you add uh, 22 and 33, you get 55, 55 and 45 gives you 100. You have 100% of the probability to, um, laid out there, so now you have all the correct proportions. All right, so that's your hypothesis. Somebody could come up with that hypothesis. It's a little different than the other one we had. The other one said, of course, they were all equal. Well, how does that change things? Well, the HA remains the same. Right? At least one of the multinomial probabilities does not equal these hypothesized values. So this is saying the alternative to HO is that at least one of those is wrong. And then the test data, of course, is the same thing. You still have three fractions. However, those three fractions will have different expected values, right? These numbers at the bottom, the expected values, will be different. Okay, so again, the observed values, the O's, they haven't changed. The observed values will still be the same. So 99, 129, 72. But when you subtract off the expected values, the expected values are a little different now. Using that same idea again, the expected value for the first city will be equal to N times P1. In other words, the proportion you see here, right? Sometimes people use notation P1 comma 0. The 0 is referring to the H0 symbol, that 0 there. And it's to tell you to take this number here, right? To take that number there and put it in. So in our case, it would be something like 300 times 0.33. And that will give you the answer, right? OK, so that will be essentially 99. So it turns out to be the exact same number, right? 33% uh, of 300. For every uh, 100, that of course is 33, so it would be 99. So we end up getting the exact number for Rome, which is good. That's zero for that expected value. That's awesome. That's great. Next one, though, will be a little different. Of course, we have 45%. So for the the next category, we have expected value for the second category being n times p2, where p2 is the 45, right? So then you'll plug in 300 times 0.45, and that'll be your, your result. So again, um, there'd be 45 for every 100, so that'd be 90, so it'd be 135. So we expect 135 here, and that's it. Okay, and then the last one is the uh, 72 minus its expected value, and this would be the third category here. So now, looking all the way at this 22 here, so it'd be E3, the expected value for the third category is N times the probability listed in the third um, categories here, null hypothesis statement, and that'll be 0.22 here. And then, of course, you have three 22s added together, so that'd be 66 is the expected value, 66. Okay, and there you have it. Together, putting that all together, it gives you your three fractions. You would go ahead and calculate each of those fractions, add the results together, and you get your test stat. Once you have your test stat, you compare it again against that critical value. 